Cell phones, laptops, power tools, e-bikes and scooters, electric cars, even e-cigarettes. All of these items are connected because they all have one thing in common. Each uses lithium ion batteries and those batteries are generally safe. However, they are extremely sensitive to high temperatures. And that means if a battery pack overheats or fails, it can easily catch fire. And that's exactly what happened this weekend to a group of roommates in Adams County. A battery powered skateboard that uses lithium ion batteries exploded in their home. It's very scary. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is going deeper tonight and speaking with Adams County Fire about this all too common hazard in our homes. What do you got going on today? Jerry Means and Ryder Robeson have worked together for a while. We have since this is day one. And although they've seen a lot in their time as fire investigators, we spent some time in the dark together, out on fire scenes, crawling around. Nothing was quite like this past Sunday night. I thought he had just burned his face off to, to put it out there. Terrifying because it just happened like that. You've likely seen the videos of lithium ion battery explosions. They're like dysfunctional fireworks, shooting sparks, fire, and debris everywhere. This one at a campsite in Utah, this on a plane in Europe. It just makes you go, oh my God. Jerry and Ryder were responding to a similar call Sunday. A skateboard with lithium ion batteries had exploded in a home. These are some photos. One of the roommates had minor burns, but all got out okay. Then, as Jerry and Ryder arrived to investigate... It appeared that all of these batteries had already burned. They had self-ventilated. And so with that, we also took the extra step of utilizing a thermal imaging camera to ensure the temperature was okay. As I set them down, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a very a red glow. And he said something like, uh-oh. It just, boom, exploded. And the next thing I remember is that we are about 12 feet away. These events are becoming more common. What these firefighters and others want to stress is that these batteries are in everything. Our phones, our toys, e-bikes, even the equipment lockers here at Denver 7. In fact, we took a quick count and found there are no less than 12 of these things locked up here. And because we use them so often, we have a method of disposing of them and firefighters are hoping you'll do the same. Don't simply throw them in the trash. You can take them to a recycling kiosk. Sometimes those are in hardware stores. Taking it apart, dismantling it, altering it in any way can cause a catastrophe. These guys feel lucky to have escaped unharmed. Do we have a moment? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did. Even the professionals want you to know messing with these when they're malfunctioning is risky business. It's spooky, so unexpected, so fast. It was a close call. For Denver 7. Could have been a lot worse. I'm Russell Haythorn. Gosh, it really makes you rethink everything you have in your home. And Denver 7 Investigates has looked into this issue of lithium battery fires. Most recently, a Tesla that crashed and caught fire in Evergreen last May. A driver of a 2021 Tesla Model 3 was killed after his car went off the road and slammed into a tree. It then caught fire. The passenger says the car was in its auto drive function. Federal investigators are looking into that crash. Now, those in charge of the federal investigation say they were looking into whether lithium ion batteries in the Tesla contributed to the fire's intensity. And now let's provide you with a different perspective here. We spoke with a firefighter expert who goes to different departments to educate crews on how to fight these lithium fires since they burn at such a high temperature. And he says these fires can quickly burn as hot as 25 to 2800 degrees. From a first responder as a firefighter, that, that is something where I don't think we want to see any more of that. And with my education and my background, if I can reach out to the public and I can get the public to understand it, then I know that we're saving lives and we're putting less of a risk on the citizens. And he says it's important to have an understanding of where these batteries need to be charged. If you need to charge your battery, do it in the garage while you're awake. Once the battery is fully charged, make sure it is no longer connected to the wall.